Well, Spurs fans, we haven't had a Kelvin Johnson getting traded for insert name here rumor for a while. Well, we got two today. What is up, San Antonio Spurs fans? Welcome to TSR Sports. Hope you're having a great week. And well, let's just let's get into it. That's what we do here. No time to waste. Blam! Report. The Spurs have shown a willingness to part with multiple first round picks as well as Calvin Johnson in a potential trade for Lowry Markinen. I guess this isn't too much surprise. We've kind of seen this here and there. Let's, let's get into directly from Sports Illustrated. Continuing from that uh, tweet there, in a potential deal from Markkinen, sources said, yet San Antonio still believes in the 24-year-old wing's development. I had some reports Kelman's working on is shooting something we definitely can agree that he needs to find some consistency in his shot. Hopefully he's working on his defense too. What exactly does multiple first-round picks mean to get Lowry Markkinen? I know a lot of you on the channel want to get him. Kelman plus two first round picks, four first round picks, six first round picks. What exactly, how much is the fire is Danny Age going to hold us if this trade was to potentially happen? Moving along, Siegel also said the Spurs might be close to pulling the trigger on a move with Cam Johnson. The former first round pick is said to be on the outs in Brooklyn and the Nets might be willing to part with him. The talk is there could be a straight up swap for Kelman Johnson, so a one for one, okay? The second NBA analyst, Jake Weinbach, suggested on Sunday the Spurs make the move to pair Cam Johnson with emerging star Victor Wembanyama. So two analysts are saying something might be out there in the bubble. Cam Johnson had a decent campaign in 2023-24 as he remained one of the Nets' better shooters. He averaged 13 points, four rebounds, and two and a half assists for Brooklyn. Kelman, you know, pew pew, doing the pew pew. Kelman Johnson regressed last, say, last season as he took a backseat to Wembanyama. The year before, when he was the guy for our Spurs as a starter, Kelvin averaged 22 points, 5 boards, and 3 assists. The deal makes sense for Brooklyn, who needs to add more scoring punch. Does it make sense for the Spurs, though? Does it? As it is clear they want to move Cam Johnson, the only question which remains is whether Johnson alone going to going is is whether Johnson alone going to be enough for Brooklyn to make the deal. So a Johnson for a Johnson. All right, so the Laurie Markkinen thing, I want to circle back to that real quick. I don't see it happening because I feel like the Jazz and Ainge are going to just going to ask for way too much, which is the way of saying, hey, we're willing to trade him only if you're going to give us the most ridiculous, you know, out-of-this-world trade ever. Otherwise, we want to keep him. I think they're going to ask for four or five first-round picks plus Kelman. Salary matches up. But I don't, I don't, I like Lowry. I think it'd be fun to watch him and Wemby on the court. But if they're asking for four or five first round picks, I don't think it's worth it at worth that point because if he doesn't pan out, we've now possibly crippled our future with, with giving up so many draft picks. I know we have too many draft picks. You guys mentioned like, hey, we can't just draft all these guys. I agree 100%, but I also don't want to give up the farm for one player. As far as the other player mentioned in this article, Cameron Johnson. His contract is about $23 million a year. He's a few years uh, younger than, or sorry, a few years older than Kelvin. And when I look at them statistically, I, I just take a look at 2024. Spurs fans, let me know. I don't follow Cam Johnson, so I can only go by what I see here. Is he that much better of a defender than Kelvin Johnson? Is he that much of an upgrade? I mean, I look here, I'm like, yes, I know Kelvin played more minutes, but yeah, Johnson. I can't use Johnson because they bo they're both Johnsons. Cameron has a higher three-point percentage, but is it that much of an upgrade to do a swap? Is he going to fit with the locker room? There's a lot of questions there. And just looking at them for his career, you know, 1v1, like, I don't feel like there's enough there. Maybe I'm missing something. Let me know in the comments down below if you follow Cam Johnson's career. Is he a player You're like, you know what? I think the Nets are holding him back. They have unlocked his full potential, and... That Johnson can really shine with the Spurs. Just, you know, let that Johnson go. All right, that's enough of that. I, personally, especially if he's having issues in Brooklyn, and I don't know what kind of issues he's having in the locker room, but if there's any type of locker room distraction, anything, 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 I tend to stay away from those type of players. Kellen seems to be, you know, a good Spursy guy, does the community stuff. He's gone from, don't let's not forget what he's gone from. The previous season, he was the number one guy. He was the franchise for one year. 
and no, he didn't have the greatest year ever, but he was, he did okay in that role as his first time being in that role. He had that huge, he had like a long 10-game stretch where he was awful, which brought his whole season stats down. But overall, I thought he did a passable job as being the guy. So you go from the guy to the face. You're the face of the San Antonio Spurs for one year. And next year, now you're number three. It's clear that Wemby's going to be number one, as he should be. But then Devin takes over the second role. You're the third option. Okay. I didn't hear him say peep or hear anything bad from his can or from, from any of you guys saying Kellen's you know, not happy with his role, accepted the role. And then about halfway through the season, he goes from being the third guy. Now he's number six. Hey, we're putting you to the bench to be our sixth man. From one to three to six in less than a year. He was our number one guy in April of last year, and the switch was made what in January of this year? That's less than a year. You went from the number one guy to the three guy. To the sixth guy. I never heard anything anywhere about him complaining or not accepting his role. That's a good thing to have on your team. I know he's got issues in his game, but those are the type of players I'd rather keep around. Now, I also get if we can trade him and get something great for him, then I'll understand if the Spurs move on. Cam Johnson, I don't see being that guy from what I know of him. Lowry Markinen. Yes, if the price is right. And what I mean by that is Kelvin plus, or not trading our pick or the, the Hawks 2025 first round pick. That is out of the question. And I think that, I, I would think if I was a, a GM, that's what I would be asking for if I'm Danny Age. I'm like, you know, 2025 draft class is pretty loaded. Why don't we take your pick and Atlanta's pick and then some other picks? Nope, 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 not doing that. I do think it's going to have to be multiple first round picks three first round picks could we give them the hawks pick in 27 our pick in 28 could, could we do something like we've been doing but do that to them like hey we'll give you unprotected first round picks and i think they're gonna be protected or very lightly protected like top four type deal and send three or maybe three in a pick swap three in a pick swap for lowry marketing I would be on board and I wouldn't be upset, but if we start getting into picks from 2025 and four unprotected picks, five unprotected picks, six unprotected picks, I'm just gonna be like, no, no, that's, that, that, I, no. It'll be interesting to see if the Spurs make any of their moves. It's been a quiet off season. We signed Chris Paul. We had the Paris and Barnes trade where we essentially just took on his contract. And we had the summer league where some players shined, some players disappointed, but it, it's, I think it's gonna be an exciting time, but honestly. I don't think anything's going to happen. I don't think we're going to make any trades this offseason. We have 15 players on our roster. We have two more waiting in the wings for G League, con not G League contracts, but they will go to the G League for two-way contracts. I think that's it. I think we're going to sign two players out of Harrison Ingram, uh, Riley Dick, Riley Mick, Riley Mixon, Dixon? Shoot, forgetting his name. <laughs> Dang, forget my, my brother from another's name. Or Donovan Williams, Riley Mixon. So Donovan Williams, Riley Mixon, or Harrison Ingram. I think it's going to be two out of those three that get the final two-way contracts. Jamari Bouye is on one as well. Unless they they Bouye the Bouye out of here, then it will probably be Mixon, Ingram, and Williams. Time will tell what happens with that. But I think there's only moves that are going to happen. Honestly, being a Spurs fan and seeing the moves we've done over the last few decades, I think we're done making moves. We have 15 players, and we're going to roll with what we got. And no matter what happens, it's going to be a fun ride. Drop a comment down below. We talked about Larry Marketing before. Kelvin plus what? What would you what would you like? What do you what do you re, what would you reasonably be okay with as a Spurs fan trading for him? Three first round picks, four, five? Are you just like, you know what? Let's win now. Five first round picks. I don't care. Let me know. And as far as Cam Johnson, if you follow his career, let me know. Is he that big of an upgrade over Kelvin or is it is it negligible where it just doesn't even make, make sense to swap players? Hit the thumbs up, like support the channel, and subscribe to become part of our awesome Spurs community. I thank you as always. Go Spurs, go.